One of the most debated topics in contemporary philosophy is the relation between the mind and the body. How does the body, a purely physical object, relate to the mind, an entity that supposedly has the opposite attributes of matter? If hearing a joke makes us laugh, what is the connecting point where the humor of the poem, something that seems to be somewhat intangible and ethereal, activates the ventromedial prefrontal cortex and causes a series of neurological reactions that result in audible contractions of our diaphragm. As it is well known, this problem stems from Descartes' worldview. For Descartes, the natures of the mind and body are not only different, but in some way opposite. For him, the concept of the body includes nothing at all which belongs to the mind and the concept of the mind includes nothing at all which belongs to the body. With such a view, the possibility of interaction between mental and physical phenomena becomes problematic. Our contemporary theories of the mind in philosophy are aware of this dichotomy and of the problems that derive from it. Descartes' chasm between the mental and the physical is precisely what forces us to choose between the mind or the body. And of course, Given an option, the preference is for physicalism, the view that all that exists is material. In other words, given a choice between keeping the diet of the physical and the mental, saying that everything is mental, or saying that everything is physical, most contemporary philosophers would opt for the latter. Why? It is more accord with our current scientific connaissance. We live in our material world, and that is something undeniable. Of course, there have, been, there have been moments in the history of philosophy where this immediate access to the materiality of things has been questioned to the point that matter has been considered as strange as immateriality is for us nowadays. An analogy, and I hope I'm not the only one who has this experience, will be staring at a familiar object until it becomes odd, weird. In the same fashion, philosophically, if we start paying attention to the materiality of things long enough, we may start wondering, why is there matter at all? Why is there extension and not the opposite? Perhaps this illustrates why in the past, philosophers went as far as to say that all that exists is a form of mind and that the physical world is only an appearance. We still see this in popular culture, in movies like The Matrix, Inception or Doctor Strange, where virtual reality takes over and the physicality of things seems to disappear. But that view is disliked outside science fiction. For our contemporary sensibility, in the scholarly and scientific world, the preference is for physicalism, that is, for understanding the whole of reality as something that is material. However, we should notice this. Under this materialist approach lies a very dualistic picture of the world, one that certainly will horrify physicalists if they realize how Cartesian, coming from Descartes, their presuppositions are. The question is, what could be a more effective way of opting out of the Cartesian scenario? It looks like what we need is an ontology, that is, a way of understanding the world where the mental and the physical are not defined in opposition to each other. That is what we see in Aristotle's and Aquinas' vision of the world. Uh, and there are different and multiple ways of approaching this paradigm shift, but the one that I would like to focus on here is the differences between Descartes and Aristotle's slash Aquinas' understanding of matter. In a way, if you wish, getting out of Descartes' categories comes down to changing the way we understand matter to be. 
And what are those differences then? Well, for Descartes, matter was a substance, something that exists by itself. For Aristotle, matter doesn't exist by itself. It needs something else to have existence. Why? Whereas for Descartes, matter consisted in an extension, for Aristotle, matter was potentiality, a sheer capacity to be. And as such, it has to be subsidiary to something that already exists. It is parasitic to some actuality. For Aristotle then, we encounter a principle of potentiality that allows for things to become and to cease, to have extension, and that is matter. And a principle of actuality, which is also a causal organizational principle that Aristotle called form. Therefore, when, uh, when it comes to the mind-body relation, as a biologist, Aristotle thought that it is the living thing that is extended, not its prime matter or its form. It follows then that Aristotle and Aquinas with him did not have to find a relation between what has an extension, the body, and what is not extended, the soul. That was not a problem because there is a mutual reciprocity between what is purely potential and what grants actualization. In other words, Aristotle did not need to relate the physical with something mental or the body with the mind because a body is only a body if it's actualized by a mind, what he called the psyche or soul. One could say, why does this matter? As long as I'm on top shape, neurologically speaking, who cares about what theory of the mind we have at hand? And maybe this is true, partially true. Um, from a practical and scientific point of view, to a certain extent true. However, when what is at stake is who we are, that is, what kind of philosophical and theological anthropology we have at hand, well, this matters. Think, for example, about how compromised free will becomes in a physical world where everything is determined. And whereas for Descartes, a human person was an aggregate of two things, two substances, one material and one immaterial that could exist separately, and therefore our identity resided in the soul, in a atomistic worldview, the human person is a whole only if it comprises these two principles, potentiality and the causal self-organizing character of the psyche that do not exist separately. Consequently, this hylomorphism of matter and form opens up to several other questions that Aquinas and the scholastics had to deal with. Is there a unity in the body? If there is such a unity, what happens after death? Will existence cease after the principle of actuality, the soul, and the principle of potentiality, matter, separate with the disintegration of um, the body as a living thing? We could further ask, well, the potentiality and matter cannot exist without some level of actuality. Is that also the case for the principle of actuality? Can the soul keep existing without its material counterpart? Without the organized body it exists for? Is there a possibility for immortality? If that is so, what grants the soul this immortality? If that is so, again, is this immortality the one of an entire human being, a living body, or just some part of a creature that used to be complete? Namely, is the immortality only of a soul which is just a vestige of the person we used to be. Aquinas thought that without our bodies in the afterlife, we will not be in good shape. The psyche of a human being is the principle of organization and it is intertwined with its material aspect. A whole human being does not consist just in having a soul. Here's where Aquinas' philosophical considerations converge with realities of faith and revelation. In particular, the Christian belief about the resurrection is more accord with an Aristotelian Thomistic approach than with a Cartesian one. 
for the cart. The mortal soul keeps on living while the material body corrupts. For Aquinas, yes, the mortal soul keeps on living, but for different reasons, not just because of immateriality, but because it possesses a subsistent act of being. However, the psyche without the body, it animates and organizes, detached from its material component, will be unhinged. The reason is that for Aquinas, following philosophical reasoning and Christian beliefs, a human being is meant to be alive, not just to be immortal. Philosophy, just by natural reasoning, is not able to reach the idea of the resurrection. It is revelation that comes with the matching half of the broken amulet, so to speak, with a missing piece that fits quite well in the keyhole where the philosophical arguments conclude. Yes, a human soul without its materiality is nonsense. For that reason, in a theological context, if death were to be defeated, it will not be through sheer immortality of the soul, but through the resurrection of the body. In light of this, many other philosophical questions open up in a mutual and fruitful interaction between philosophy and theology.